When you get started in custom car audio, there's definitely a ton to learn. Fabrication techniques, how to properly wire, how to pick the right gear. I've found all of this is very important, but one of the best ways to learn is to review build pictures. Even if a build isn't the best in the world, there's always something to learn. In fact, I think that you can actually learn a lot more about a build that has a bunch of mistakes because you can see what you should be avoiding. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Today we're gonna to take a look at one of my old builds and we're gonna do a little bit of an analysis. It's an old subwoofer enclosure build along with an amplifier install and there is no shortage of mistakes. So I'm making this video for two different reasons. The first reason is I feel that after every build, it's really important to analyze that build and think about what you could do better in the future. That way you're always learning from your mistakes. The second reason I'm making this is so that we all understand that everyone starts somewhere. I wanna make this video to help inspire those of you that are new to realize that no one is born just being excellent at doing this kind of thing. It all comes with repetition and practice. Let's jump on over to the webcam and discuss. So first things first, let's talk about this project. What was even the plan? What were we doing? So the main goal in this system was to add a 15 inch ported subwoofer in the back of this truck and to add an amplifier along with speakers. I believe this build occurred back around 2008, 2009-ish, so well over 10 years at this point. And I did this build with a friend of mine at the time for another friend of ours, it was his truck. Now first lesson right off the bat here, you can see that we're using a large subwoofer. This was a 15 inch kicker, I think it was either an L5 or an L7, but regardless, it was a large sub in the back of the truck. Now there's nothing wrong with using large subwoofers if you are okay with losing part of your vehicle. So in this case, obviously we're losing the use of this rear seat area in the back of the vehicle. A lesson to learn here is yes, it takes space to make base. That's a saying I like to use. If you're picking a large subwoofer, you need to be okay with the fact that it's gonna require a large air volume. And I think one of the main problems with this build is I specifically remember that he didn't get this gear for this truck. He had all this gear left over from a previous build. So we were trying to reuse existing gear in a new application, which led to us using gear that probably wasn't the best for that application. Here's a picture with the seats folded up and with what I know now, there's definitely enough room under there that you could have done a couple of down firing 12s or 10s. You could have done some forward firing 10s or eights or even six and a half. So plenty of options for using that under seat area to still get plenty of base, but to not lose the use of that seat. The subwoofer size not being a great choice was only the first thing. There's gonna be a reoccurring theme that you're gonna see throughout this project and that theme is just bad planning. Something I stress here on the channel all the time is the more that you can plan a system, the better. And a big part of that planning process is picking the right gear, gear that is compatible with each other and compatible with your application. I did wanna mention really quick, one of my favorite resources for the planning stages is my show sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, we can use their vehicle selector tool and enter the year, make, and model of our vehicle. And this pulls up a bunch of research that they've done on that vehicle. Not only do they have pictures, so that we can see behind some of the panels and get an idea of what we're getting ourselves into. They also have compatibilities for speaker sizes, formed subwoofer enclosure applications that fit into stealth locations, and harness type information so that we know what adapter harnesses we need for installing head units and speakers. I actually just picked up this new Sony head unit from them. More about what I'm planning on using this in at the end of the video. When you're planning your next car audio build, definitely check them out. You can use the link here on screen to take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans or down in the video description. In this vehicle, we did not replace the factory head unit. So that meant that in order to send signal to our new subwoofer amplifier, we needed a way to get that signal. And for that, we used a passive line output converter. What I don't like about using a passive LOC is the signal coming into it. It's just not a very strong signal, first of all, because it's speaker level. And then when you send that into the amplifier, a lot of times if the amplifier isn't really designed to use that sort of signal, you really have to boost the gain quite a bit to get 
usable volume out of that amplifier. Increasing that gain to a high level can lead to more noise in the system and there's other issues as well. A lot of times with a factory radio, when you turn up the volume, it will intentionally decrease the bass output. And they do that to protect the inexpensive stock speakers in the vehicle. But obviously when you're adding a subwoofer, you don't want that bass reducing. So that's why I like to use a purpose-built solution like this, an active line output converter. As an example, Audio Control's LC2i is legendary for adding subwoofers and they now have the new LC2i Pro version as well. A couple of other notes on this picture, I do have a feeling that we did likely solder the connections at least to the factory speaker wiring for a good connection inside of this tubing, but you will see that these connectors here are pretty exposed. They could have potentially shorted against the sheet metal, and if we look at the next pictures here, they're kind of blurry, but it looks like I did wrap some electrical tape around those connections to give them a little bit of protection. If you were doing something like this, I think a better idea would be to use some heat shrink, a long piece of heat shrink over this. With that long heat shrink over that, it helps protect those connections so they're not touching anything that they shouldn't be. It also helps to keep those connections together so that they can't possibly rattle loose over time. So next up here, let's take a look at our amplifier mounting. And I do like on this mounting that at least for our wires, we made sure that we had our wiring kind of doing a clean run here, tucked underneath the carpet. I don't like that this is kind of obviously bundled in here, which could potentially lead to some noise issues. I would like to see that bundle kind of elongated more if it did need to be wrapped up or better yet using a good length of wire so that we don't have an excessive bundle like that but the other problem with the mounting that i see here this was kind of the old school way of doing things where you would just put a piece of wood underneath the back side of the carpet and then you just run some screws <laughs> through the carpet in order to bolt down obviously we know now that a little bit better solution is to make a plastic rack that could probably pick up one of these mounting locations here on this under seat bracket and then that plastic rack could be what the amplifier actually bolts to that way you're not putting any holes in your carpet that way you have a good solid hold on a factory mount just a better way to do things here we have a side view of the amplifier mount but something else I want to talk about here is just general installation procedure something that I don't like here is one this is really light carpet we should have been really careful and not had any tools sitting on the floor like this tools have a tendency to attract grease and dust and dirt and if you get it on a light colored carpet like this it can be really difficult to get it off a good idea is to use some sort of protection like a holder like this to have all of our tools on it while we're doing a build and another good idea while we're doing a build we want to remove these interior pieces from the vehicle we don't potentially knock them out of the vehicle which could lead to scratching or breaking them they're just out of the way the cleaner our work environment the better we are going to talk more about the fabrication on the subwoofer enclosure here but I do want to turn our attention to the speaker install. First off, you probably remember that there was only the one amplifier, so that amplifier was used on the subwoofer, which means that we didn't use any amplifier when we did eventually add speakers, which in my opinion, I feel like if you're really gonna upgrade speakers, it's a good idea to upgrade and add an amplifier as well to get the max potential out of that upgrade. Another thing, we did not do any sound treatment on this door at all, so as you can imagine, once we did add a little bit better speakers that have more capacity to recreate bass, and handle more power, you can imagine that this piece of plastic likely was making noise inside of the panels. It would have been a good idea to reinforce this more and add more sound treatment inside of the door panel, especially focusing around the outside of the speaker here in order to improve that performance. So let's talk about this subwoofer enclosure. Let's just do a quick overview looking at some of the different angles of this. You can see this is a ported enclosure interesting port location and uh, size there. We'll talk more about that in a second, but let's just talk about general issues here. First off, if we look at this beauty panel on the side here, you can see we tried to do this kind of raised embossed lettering. It doesn't even look like it was perfectly centered, so definitely measure out that sort of thing. Something else I notice here is we definitely only cut these insert locations using a jigsaw. I can just tell because these are not perfectly straight. 
If you followed some of my builds here on the channel, you know that I use a router quite often, and the reason for that is because it just gives such a perfect result. Not only for curved lines, but for simple lines that are nice and straight. Obviously, we wouldn't be able to cut straight lines on the inside here using something like a circular saw that is meant to cut straight. We would have to rough cut with a jigsaw, and we don't even have to use templates. We could use the straight edge from the flat side of a board that has never been cut before. We could stick that to our piece here using some double-sided template tape and then use a flush trim bit in order to copy that profile and just make these cuts a lot more straight. The same goes for our corners here. The corners look to be relatively the same size radius, but if we look at this corner here, it looks like it was cut a little extra deep into the material. Definitely just kind of a sloppy look overall. You can honestly get a router for as little as $30, even cheaper if you're buying used. It's just a great investment if you plan on doing this kind of thing. Next, we definitely need to discuss this material choice for wrapping this enclosure. So it looks like I used some sort of micro suede. I'm sure that we got the material from more of a big box store, craft type store. I definitely recommend using an upholstery supplier for getting upholstery materials. A company that actually supplies automotive manufacturing with their stock materials. That way you can get a much better match. There's tons of different options online. Look for upholstery suppliers, not a craft store. I think that this enclosure would have looked a lot better with a factory match carpet wrapped around it, and then we could have done some vinyl accents that match the door panels in the vehicle just for a better overall match. Like right here, instead of using that black suede that doesn't exist anywhere else in the vehicle, we could have used that vinyl wrap. Another thing to discuss here when we're talking about our materials, I don't think that the material I found was long enough to be able to fully encompass the height of this. So either that or I ran out of material. There was some reason that I added this black piping material to kind of just hide a seam. That was just kind of lazy. We should have bought more material or again, got the right materials. As far as construction of this box goes, again, it was a ported enclosure. You can see on the top here, I only used a single layer baffle and it's not a huge deal because the edges of this baffle baffle were really close to the vertical pieces of wood so there really isn't much opportunity for that baffle to flex but nowadays what I would do a little bit differently is I would countersink this subwoofer in using a second piece of wood that second piece of wood would add more strength to the baffle of the enclosure helping to reduce the likelihood of flexing in this panel which is better for acoustics and for just a better look it usually is nicer to have that subwoofer kind of flush down in another general construction issue and just the layout of the way I put this together that I don't like is you can see this line right here. What I did is I wrapped this piece of the enclosure separate from the rest of the enclosure. So this is actually two different layers of wood here. And what I think I would do a little bit different nowadays is I would make this part of the enclosure permanently attached to this part. That way I could wrap the upholstery materials around and then I would use this insert here as a transition gap. And rather than only having the one color of insert here, I might do something else on the inside to hide this seam and then have that insert inside piece that press fits in there have some sort of chamfer around the inside edge or something like that just to transition between several different materials but eliminating this need for just a random side piece. Another problem with this side panel and this is just such a foolish silly mistake again and this is one of the first builds that I ever really even did so I've definitely learned a lot since then but you can see these little specks right here and what those are this panel, I needed a way to make it hold onto the side of the enclosure. And the way I did that is I just used some brad nails, just shot them, shot them right through to hold on that panel. So silly because I could have easily unbolted the subwoofer and mounted this panel from the inside of the enclosure. That way you would never see any sort of fastener. So silly, live and learn. Another construction issue here is the size of this port. This port probably should have extended all the way to each side and been a long slot vented port. I think the reason we had this port be this size is because we didn't really have any more width to work with. We didn't have any depth to work with. So we had to use all of this height and we were already so tall that it would have been ridiculous to try to make the enclosure even taller. This kind of goes back to the fact of just using 
using a subwoofer that was really too large for this application. This particular subwoofer model really likes to have a lot of air volume. And unfortunately, this is the kind of thing that happens when you pick a piece of gear that really isn't the best for the application. You end up having to make some sort of sacrifice. So in this case, we sacrificed port size in order to have a little bit more air volume. So overall, this wasn't the worst build in the world. Definitely a learning experience. I remember that it did get down. It had quite a bit of bass. Oh, we can get the headphones off here. Now, I do need a quick favor from you guys, if you don't mind. I'm looking for some input. Do you guys think it would be cool if I did this sort of video and opened it up for your projects? If you guys have some old build pictures that you could send in or even a recent project and you would kind of like some feedback and some construction criticism. So two questions here. Is that something you would like to see on the channel? And is that something that you would like to participate in? Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I just got this new head unit. This is going to be going into the Jetta project that I recently started planning. If you guys want to catch more of that project where I'll be installing this along with two amplifiers, six speakers, uh, two additional subwoofers. This is going to be quite the cool project. Definitely make sure that you guys subscribe. You can check out some of my past build videos here on screen. And next time you're planning to build, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield at the link on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Mike, Ron, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all these guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for watching.